to listen and respond to this fuck shit these niggas been saying for the last, what, this six, seven years? Why you gonna stop? Not longer than that. Longer than that. Y'all was accusing me of shit that I ain't even doing. And what's funny, I wasn't even in town. So figure that one out. I know one of my boys went down there and, and, and one of them weird ass bodyguards did some dumb shit talking about they don't fuck with cowboys. So if you don't fuck with cowboys, that's cool. You, you, you know, you don't, don't express yourself to me. Whoever the bodyguard is, one of them fools that says some weird shit. One of my boys went down there and inquired and said they fuck with cowboys. And one of them dummy said some shit like we don't fuck with cowboys. So I don't know what that we mean, nigga. What up, though? You already know where you at and who you rocking with, right? So let's get to it then. So Big U doesn't think anybody's smart for listening to anybody but him. And Cowboy has made himself a liability and become outcast by the remaining members of All Money In. He admitted that he hadn't spoke to anybody since Nipsey had passed away, stating how he expected more from certain people when everything was said and done. But my question is this. What did he expect and from who? I feel like Big Sam or Black Sam feels like Cowboy and others let him down and let their guard down on that night and allowed that to happen to Nipsey Hussle, at least by what he said in the Big Boy interview. Somebody come to the shop. They know we in, we, we in the doorway. When Hustle pull up, we in the doorway. You gonna see me with a hoodie on, and I got a pistol on me. You gonna see one of my one of the team members in a hoodie uh, uh, in the doorway with a pistol. That's protocol. My hustle pull up. So it's Sunday. It's busy in there. Why the, why why the niggas in there didn't follow follow the protocol? I wasn't there. Why they didn't follow it? Maybe they just fucking around helping the customer, doing some fucking customer service. This is what I'm thinking. Trying to you know. Transition into some legitimate just selling clothes, but nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. But I really feel like it could be deeper than that, seeing as how the two share different ideology about Eric Holder's true intentions on that day. From my understanding, old boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene because he knows he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot, and um. Had a conversation, probably seen nobody was in the doorways, checked hustle, had on shorts, checked everybody else, left. They say came back with a red shirt on, tiptoed through the alley, and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. There's a story he's basically trying to get people to listen to CDs and certain extent, you know, uh, if you jumping out, he, he was really looking for problems, uh, honestly, in my heart, I know for sure he, he didn't come there looking for them, you know what I mean, he came to the hood wanting some problems for sure, you know what I mean, uh, you jumping out with two pistols, you're gonna find problems, I don't care, any hood you jump out, you know what I mean, uh, listening to their different point of views outside of Nipsey's passing, it's easy to see the disconnect. Cowboy doesn't think it was premeditated, and Sam does. But they both seem to agree that the conversation wasn't the cause of El Eric Holder's actions. Ain't no question that you killed them. We just need to know why. We know the conversation ain't it, motherfucker. That ain't it. So I'm beyond that. Eric, the rest of the world, y'all focus on the conversation and be lost. Y'all go for the smoke screen that. Y'all go for that. But me, I still need to know why. Okay, was it the this? Okay, I can respect that. That nigga didn't want to listen to my diss and I got mad. You don't believe he had any dialogue with, with Nip that day? Or did anybody say he said something? Yeah, no, they had, they had dialogue, but it was in the mix of him coming up, talking to bro, and, you know, whatever whatever transpired, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't an aggressive dialogue. It was just maybe small talk, and then maybe she was saying Nip brought something up to him. Okay, he may have, but... It wasn't, uh, to me, to me, that don't, whatever the dialogue was, that didn't, that, that didn't, um, that didn't justify, or that didn't, that didn't turn into that, 
You know what I'm saying? He, he came there for he came there for a reason. All right, the way I see it, Cowboy contradicted himself saying Eric didn't come there looking for Nip. And in my mind, that further solidifies Black Sam's claim of premeditation. Now, if Cowboy knew Holder was looking for trouble, as he said, and had pulled guns on people in the previous days leading to Nip's passing, then why wasn't he on high alert when he saw him approaching Nip, or at least ushering Nip away from him? That doesn't make a lot of sense. If you couple that with the fact that Sam says he wasn't good in the neighborhood at all, that him being there doesn't seem so random, does it? No, me personally, hustle, fast. Like we seen a lot of the homies raised because we had that shop seven days a week. You know, before it was the marathon store. When it was Slauson T, Slauson Ave, we had weed spots all in the hood. So we seen a lot of the young homies raised from kids to teenagers to adults. We watched them. They know us. We know them. Anything we throw in the parking lot, if you're from that area, if you're from the 60s, if you from the 30s to the 100s, when you hustle, throw something in that parking lot, you coming. From whatever it is. You in the hood, you smoking weed, you coming to our spots. He was never at any, any, any functions. He was never at any grand openings. He was never at any anything hustle was doing. He was never at any shows. It's because he wasn't good in the hood. Yeah, it hit different when Black Sam speaking, huh? But check this out, Cowboy contradicts himself again when it comes to the Carrie Lathan not taking the stand issue. Let's take a look, man. When Carrie Lathan took the stand, you got a very different story. He took the stand, he said, I don't know nothing, I didn't see nothing. They asked him to identify himself in the surveillance video, he said he refuses to identify himself. He refused to identify Eric Holder, you know, uh... Deputy District Attorney John McKinney said you don't want to testify about what happened. Gary Lathan said that's right. <laughs> now he was obviously there. He was obviously a witness. Were you there when you were watching it, when, when he did when he took the stand? No, I wasn't there. But um, I mean, he did the right thing. There was no information for him to give. He did the right thing. He stuck to the code. It was not, you know, uh, he stuck to the code. It was not for him to give. It, I, the, his testimony not gonna get. Not gonna make or break. The, 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 the case, you know what I mean? So he stuck to the code, so he ain't got to get no backlash, nothing to talk about. He stuck to the code, that is what it is. So, Cowboy saying he did the right thing, there was no information for him to give, and that Lathan stuck to the code couldn't have sat well with Black Sam. And how is victim slash eyewitness testimony not pertinent to a case? Can you describe what happened exactly? Uh, me and my nephew were going up the street to console somebody else's parents because uh, they just lost their parents. So he said, you don't have to keep wearing that shirt. I was, I was like, what? He said, this shirt. I said, it's clean. He said, look, it's dense. You're in the new world. You're not in prison no more. You can pull right. He said, matter of fact, they don't miss you in a lot. So you can pull right in and grab you a, a, a fresh white shirt. I'm like, okay. So when I go in there, they didn't have the white ones that I wanted. I said, when, when y'all going to get that in again? He said, well. They're gonna miss him a lot. Go talk to him. And I told him, he said, that, that'll be about a week, bro. I said, okay. And when I said it, it was all bad. The gun that hit the, turned around the, the car and shot me, then shot me. And then shot my nephew. The nature of the conversation wasn't more important than Lathan's account of events. I mean, even though he didn't give them, but still, cowboy tripping. And I gotta say, I'm leaning towards Black Sam's point of view and account of events. Especially after Big U start taking shots at him with Pistol Pete on the live stream, man. My nigga Pete just won't say. You already know it, man. It's Big U, my big motherfucking brother, man. What's up? You know we outside tonight, man. Birthday party tomorrow. Yeah, dude. Movie tonight, you know what I'm saying? Fat Joe, DJ Khaled, you know, the whole TS. You know Big U gotta be on deck on that all the time. All right, what up, though? What up, though? What up, though? Peace to the guys and herbs, man. Check it out, man. I'm going to close like this, man. Shout out to the notes. I'm going to do it old school for the closing, man. We're going to do it with the notes, you dig? Look, the more and more I study Cowboy, the more and more he look complicit. You know what I'm saying? Just let me say that, though. Let me get that out the way, man. The more and more I study Cowboy, the more and more he look complicit. 
or, 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 or. He not the brightest bulb in the box. He not the sharpest tool in the shed. You know what I'm saying? How one minute you gonna say the conversation don't matter? The conversation don't matter. That's what you went to court for, homie. That's what you face being called a snitch, a rat, and everything else in the hood about. Correct? Going to court and let him tell it. The only thing that they were concerned with was the conversation leading up to what happened. Right? He went to court for that. But then says that Carrie Lathan... Kerry Lathan's information is null and void. He ain't had nothing to add. It wasn't going to make or break the case. How is our witness testimony not going to make or break a case? Even though Dog didn't get didn't give it, he told them this and that and the other blah. They spleeing about that. I wonder if Vlad's interview could have been used because it seems like Vlad did the interview beforehand. Outside of that, as I stated before, man, how Cowboy up here giving interviews talking about how Eric Holder was jumping out on folks with two pistols, uh, uh, threatening them because they wouldn't listen to a CD and you allowed him to get that close to Nip. Yeah, I see why Black Sam them don't mess with him. I see why all men in has outcasted him because you let the team down. You let Nip down. You let like Nip's life down, dog. Flat out. Was anybody concerned with the time frame in which he learned that Eric Holder was jumping out on people with two guns? Did he think he wouldn't do it to Nip? I mean, he was trying to get people to listen to his CD. Why wouldn't he try to get Nip to do the same? Even though they're saying that's not the case. But if you cowboy and you got this information processed in your head, why would you not be ushering Nip away from him? Like, come on, dog. This, this ain't it. This ain't the right scene, man. Let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's go to whatever the fuck ever to get him out the way. You know what I'm saying? It, it just don't make sense, dog. That part don't make sense to me at all. You feel me now? Then couple that with the fact that he all of a sudden leaves and then Nip gets shot. Now, it worked both ways. You feel me? Eric Holder could have saw the play. Should have said, oh, he out here naked. He ain't got nobody with him. He ain't got nothing on his hip. Now is my time. Or, you know... He could have made his exit because he knew the play was coming. I ain't saying that's what it is, but I'm saying the more and more I study him, the more and more he talks on these different podcasts, the more and more he seems not the not the brightest dude and complicit in what happened in one way or the next, be it, be it, be it advertently or inadvertently complicit in what happened, dog. Now let's get to Big U and Pistol Pete, man. Who is Pistol Pete, by the way? I know you don't have to tell me. But what is he doing with Big U? I know that's his big brother, like he said. But at the same time, dog, why would he bring up DJ Khaled immediately? Now there are folks on the internet saying that this was not a response to Black Sam. It was a response to Whack 100. I'm saying he killing two birds with one stone with this. Now you can pick through the information, pick and choose what he's saying to who or whatever if you like to. Me, uh, I'm just going to break down what he said. You know what I'm saying? Certain things apply. Certain things do not. He said we out here in Miami, by the way. I think that's where DJ Khaled is supposed to be from, right? Miami or something like that. He's from the Florida area. I, don't, I thought so, at least. You know, Welcome to My Hood was in Miami or whatnot. So now they in Miami right after the Black Sam interview doing a live stream talking about going see Fat Joe and DJ Khaled. And then I was talking to my wisdom and she told me that there were rumors that podcasters were saying that after Nipsey's passing, DJ Khaled began to send Big U gifts. Now that's an interesting theory. I can't call it fact or fiction, but that's an interesting theory, isn't it? Now why would he do that? Black Sam just gave an interview saying that he was pressed. Somebody tried to press them, at least that's what I got from it. I took that from it. Somebody was trying to press them over Khaled being in town for some type of payola and they wasn't they wasn't going for that. That didn't happen. So it was ruffle feathers over that and, and Nip started talking security and everything, correct? So this is what I'm saying. Khaled could have very well been sending gifts to get his pass to Cali back. I mean, Nipsey was gone. He the one that stood on business for him when he was tried to, when he was pressed. And then this is another point I made of my wisdom. I said, look, man, Nipsey was shooting in his hood, right? The neighborhood, right? The 60s. You think an outside gang would risk coming inside there and trying to press Nip about Cali or press them both at the same time? During the video shoot, after a while, whatever, whatever the case may be, 
Do you think that would have happened? No, it would have went up right then if it was an outside set. That's why I think that Black Sam was alluding to the fact that Big U and them was trying to press them over him being in the hood and this and that and the other. You know what I'm saying? He do get, what, 15 to 30 percent. Like he said, it would not. he might have been charging the poor tax. And I ain't going to get ahead of myself, but that whole, uh, I wasn't even in time. So y'all got to figure that out, man. Cut it out, dog. Cut that out, dog. But let's get to this first, man. Big U come back on and he say something like, these lames make money off my off Big U name. They ain't never going to pull up. Who is he talking to? You feel me? Who is he talking to? Is he talking to Wack 100 or is he talking to Black Sam? Now, I know he's talking to Wack 100, but he could be talking to Black Sam, too. Now, Black Sam didn't say his name, but like I said, man, why would you be doing a live stream immediately after Black Sam's interview? Wack been talking for months. You barely said anything to him, but as soon as Black Sam opens his mouth and says what he has to say and does not use your name, you pop up on live stream doing a response. Talking about y'all going see DJ Khaled and y'all in Miami and everything else. That looks suspicious. More beyond suspicious, it looks guilty. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, dog. Just like I say, Big U looked guilty. He said, I wasn't even in town, so y'all got to figure that one out. That means absolutely nothing, homeboy. That means absolutely nothing. I wasn't even in town. Like, you couldn't make a call and, and, and put a play in motion. Like, you couldn't have put a play in motion before you left town and knew the play was going. That's why you left town. You feel me? Like, cut it out, homeboy. It's a bunch of different scenarios where that don't even make sense, what you just said. I mean, you know, it just looks like you're playing Ring Around the Rosie, trying to keep your toesies out of the pot. And they're going to fall in it eventually. They're going to fall in it eventually one way or the next. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then he say something like, y'all math ain't mathing right. It's incorrect. How am I jealous of an mf -er and I'm getting a million dollars a year from him? Easily. That's easy. You feel me? Easy. Because he's able to give you that million dollars a year. That's why you judging. He giving you a million. How, imagine how much he making. They say dead rappers get better promotion. They get better this and that and the other. Tupac. Biggie. Nipsey. You feel me? So what you mean? Uh, 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 why would I be jealous of him? Because he got bigger than the program. Bigger than you. They, they weren't mentioning big you. When they mentioned Nipsey Hussle, he had to do that. He had to mention you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Or it had to be an LA-based podcast, radio station, or whatever to bring you up in the equation with all money in. And Nipsey Hussle, man, nobody knew you had nothing to do with that for a long time, homie. Real 100 shit. I'm just being honest. That's all I can do, dog. You feel me? Uh, at a certain point, he go to talking about his accolades and everything and what he did for the community and the neighborhood and how many kids he didn't help. And he the founder of this and that and the other. And all that seems like is he's trying to compare his accolades or his charity, charitable, uh, 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 donations to Nipsey Hussle's legacy and the stuff he was doing when he was out here and the legacy that he left behind, the stuff that's still going on, the foundations that's still in play and stuff like that in his name. He trying to say he was the trendsetter and I guess the blueprint that Nip followed. But he uses the word that others are that others can name another dude that can do this and that other. Man, cut it out, dog. As I said before, your work was being done in the background. That's another reason you could be upset and want to get him out the way, even though he quote unquote supposed to be giving you a million dollars a year. Your work was in the background. His work was in the front, wide open, where everybody could see. Uh, 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 Dateline, NBC, not just the regular news. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 you got, you got real, real, real reporters and editors coming to see him. You dig what I'm talking about? Where do you fit into that equation? Where does the rolling sixties fit into that equation? Because it wasn't there for a minute. It was just nip and the marathon continues. So one could see where you would get jealousy, uh, uh, envious or any of that from. You dig? Stop playing, man. People can think. I know I can, dog. Dig this here. Uh, he followed up and said something like, don't believe this or don't believe that. Now, this clip, I think he is talking about Black Sam. Nah, man, listen, Nip, they never go against the game, boy. Don't believe that. Nip was always 100, man. Nip was my loved one. And like a son. You know what I mean? And when, when, and when Nip left his earth, we was, we was coon by coon, fire on fire. We was together. So nobody don't let nobody else tell you no different. 
Because if it was anything other different than that, I'd be gone. Believe that. I'm going to say it plain and simple. I don't believe you. See what I did there? I don't believe you. His name is you. But I'm saying I don't believe you because I was... Anyway, anyway, anyway. You get it. Anyway, I don't believe you, man. Dig this here, man. Um, Who's to say... I was discussing this with the wisdom again. And somebody was like, you think Eric Holder going to eat that whole meal by himself? If it was set up, he going to tell. And this and that and other blah, they split. That's not necessarily the case, man. There's plenty of dudes like Marlo Mike and the Bootsy thing that stood 10 toes down and didn't say a word when they needed to or was supposed to or wanted to or whatever the case may be. But in this event, his family began dying before he even made it to jail. Let's analyze that. Eric Holder's family began getting knocked off before he even got put in the cell. So what that tell you? Huh? Revenge, right? That's what everybody would think. But what if those killings were a message to keep his mouth closed? What if they were really seeking him to destroy him before he could even take the stand, before the possibility of him even taking a stand or anything like that? But since they caught him, okay. You saw what happened, right? You still got daughters, right? You got kids, you got a mama. You feel me, uncles? You saw what happened to your cousins and them. You couple that with what happened to him in there. With his head looking like Martin after the Tommy Hearns fight or something like that. And the big gash he got across his skull. And that might say, shut up, nigga. Or the next thing, next time you go to sleep, it might be permanent. I mean, who's to say? It's hypothetical still, but... Who's to say, man? You never know, man. He said, either you either got to be gaining something or hurt, gaining something to hurt somebody or preventing something to hurt somebody. These words ought to be used, my. Now, I just stated earlier, they said dead rappers get better, get better promotion. Jadakiss, Tupac, Biggie, um, the list goes on. King Von, uh, got to add Nip to that list, no disrespect. He said that he was receiving 15 to 30%. I watched a clip, video uh, array of him. Somebody put together him telling different stories about how much he's supposed to be making off Nip. It went from 15 to 30%. Now let's just say it's 15. Wouldn't he still be receiving that if they still releasing music from Nip? Wouldn't he still be receiving from the projects that's out and this and that and the other because he, he I mean, he got 15% of whatever he got 15% of. That's a gain right there. So what do you mean? What would you have to gain from? You have to be gaining something. You would be gaining something. You'd be gaining less fuss, less muss, and more money. All you got to do is count the chips. You ain't got to deal with Nip and them and this and that and the other because he said his contract went, and that's another thing, the contract went from seven to 10 years. Which one is it? I think it went from five to seven to 10 years. With the, you know, bootleg Kev, I think on the bootleg Kev podcast, he said it was a seven year contract for 30%. And that was from 2019. He said that was, that was signed in 2019 or something like that. So that means he'll still be gaining, right? Okay. Now, now he said, or be preventing something, right? You gotta be preventing something, man. Uh, he could have been preventing Nipsey from becoming bigger than the set. He was already bigger than Big U. If what Black Sam says is true and Nipsey blocked the play from somebody trying to press with his own crew all money in and not the 60s because that's two separate entities. He said his own crew blocked the play. They stood on business. Ain't nobody doing nothing to Cali. He gonna get in town. He got in town. He did everything. He got away good. Wasn't nobody pressing or nothing like that. Okay, cool. So that means Nipsey bigger than the 60s, right? I mean, that was Thursday. He died Saturday. You ain't got to be in town for somebody to call you and say, hey, Nipsey said he ain't buying that, man. He got them other niggas down there with him talking about they're going to do this and that and the other blah, they split. Man, what you want us to do about that, man? He say he don't care about this and that and the other. Man, you know how niggas hype it up on them phone calls or whatnot? He could have green lit it from wherever he was standing, whether he was in town or not. You feel me? So... That's what you got to prevent him from becoming bigger than the set. And he already did that. You feel me? That's what y'all did or whoever did. Eric Holder did. When he did that that day, he made him bigger than life itself. He immortalized him. He made him a martyr. 
and a lot of different effects. You know what I'm saying? Um, the last thing he said that was wild to me was Big U. What he said, the biggest selling name on the West Coast is Big U. No, sir, you are mistaken. The biggest selling name on the West Coast is Nipsey Hussle. It has been for quite some time. And it will be for quite some time. Sorry, not sorry. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Until we meet again. <laughs>